Hey everybody, welcome back to Throttle Grotto. This week, we're going to talk about the new series we're going to launch on the channel right after this. Stay tuned. All right, everybody, welcome back. So, I wanted to talk about the new series that I'm going to have on the channel here. And I'm still negotiating, still kind of working out what the name's going to be. Um, but... Uh, I want to start bringing you stories of people and the cars that they love. And I figured what better way to do that and to kick it off and to get some practice is to tell the story of how I got started with rabbits. So in order to do, to do that, we need to go all the way back to the beginning. So in order to take you guys back, I have to take you guys back um, well, I have to go back about 30, 30 to 40 years, depending on where we're going to start from. It started with a bike. You know, we all had bikes when we were kids, but when I was in high school, I rode my bike everywhere and didn't have a car. Um, at one point, uh, I decided that it was a good idea to get one. And I bought a 67 Chevelle that sat in the garage for, sat in the garage for about a year and a half and I made, uh, <laughs> I made uh, floor pans out of a water heater and a bunch of other stuff and never really got around to doing anything with it. So while I'm riding my mountain bike around everywhere, I ended up, uh, one of the mountain bike trails I rode at, right by the entrance to where I would go mountain biking, uh, a guy in his backyard, and this was 80, 88, 80, something like that. He had a blue rabbit truck parked in his backyard. And I saw that and I was like, that's what I want, that's cool. Um, and I tried to get that rabbit truck, failed miserably. The guy wanted like 1500 bucks for it, which makes sense. It was only like five or six years old and it had a, a blown engine. Uh, that would have been a huge money pit that I could not have afforded to do anything on my ride my bike everywhere uh, salary. <laughs> so that was the first uh, Volkswagen that kind of influenced me. So the second one that really influenced me over the years was a, an 82 Rabbit owned by the mechanic at the bike shop whose name was Doug Sanford. Now I was in high school, Doug was in college, so Doug was automatically way cooler uh, than I was just based on the fact that he was in college. But he was a genuinely cool guy. He showed me how to work on bikes a little bit and got me kind of interested in wrenching on bikes and started kind of working me from like not thinking about things mechanically into thinking about fixing things. So I was spending all of my money at the bike shop because I was riding my bikes everywhere. So Doug Sanford's car made a, a big impression on me to the fact that I still remember his name to this day, partly because I'm still into bikes, I'm still into Volkswagens, and I have that guy to thank for it. So the third rabbit that really made an impression on me was not actually a car that I owned. So the first three of these cars that I, that I really were interested in, none, none of them were cars that I owned. So I bought a 78 Rabbit diesel I uh, drove it in college for uh, a little while and it blew up. Uh, coming back on the freeway, uh, it was all like big smoke cloud behind me, blowing stuff out the exhaust, pushed it to a, yes, I pushed it off the freeway to uh, try to keep it from getting towed. It got towed anyway. Thank you, Illinois State Patrol. <laughs> uh, but I got the car back and I needed an engine for it, and I found a guy who was parting out uh, a couple of rabbits not too far from where I was at. Uh, went and visited him and his rabbit. So I don't remember his name, but he was like an, either an autocrosser or track day guy, but he had an 83 GTI, and it was lowered. It had wheels, had exhaust, and to me, that car was fast. Um, mostly because I was either driving a rabbit diesel or riding my bike everywhere. So yes, it was a fast car to me, but it was white with the blue striped interior. And 
So to this day, the combination of uh, white with the blue striped interior on a uh, Mark I GTI, still my favorite. Uh, but he took me off for a ride, scared the crap out of me, sold me a bunch of parts because I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna make my car better. Like that one, no, it never happened. Um, that car died, got towed, crushed, never saw it again. But those were the three cars that really made the impression on me um, and got me to where I'm at now. Um, so I started with the first three rabbits. I'm gonna finish with the last three rabbits. Um, I had an 84 rabbit that I bought uh, for my first big project that I wanted to do. Uh, I did a 16 valve G60 in it, did a whole bunch of stuff to it, 11 inch brakes and on and on and on, a whole bunch of stuff and was able to get that uh, featured in a magazine, which I was pretty excited about at the time. Uh, got it, uh, European Car Magazine picked that one up and did a feature on it, which I thought was really awesome, especially back in like 2000. So um, that car, uh, my friend Seth, who if you've been here since the start, you, you know Seth from his videos and us fixing his door jam. Um, so Seth has the purple rabbit now and it actually looks better uh, now that Seth has it and the way he's built it uh, than it did when I had it. So good on you Seth for, for uh, really knocking that one out of the park. The second one was uh, my 77 rabbit. I was a 77 uh, Miami Blue TDI that I built out of a $500 car that I bought uh, about a mile from my house. Drove it home with a blown head gasket on the 1.5 diesel motor and swapped in a uh, turbo diesel from a uh, Mark III Jetta. And that car was a lot of fun. Uh, had a lot of a lot of cool stuff on that car. And uh, that car got uh, in a couple of magazines. It was a Euro tuner. And uh, one of the goals for building that car was to get it into a European magazine and I accomplished it with that. So I got into Performance VW with that car. And then uh, then the 75s. I finally came across uh, a 75 that I felt that I needed to have. Uh, it was an 1174 production date. So super early in the, uh, in the Rabbit uh, production line. I think it was one of the first 5,000 cars. And, uh, came across some storage issues and needed some money. And so I sold that car to a guy in Canada. Now, if you know anything about selling a car to someone in a foreign country, especially from the States going to Canada, is that it has to be a running and driving car. That one was not. Um, that's where this car came in. So this car, is the parts car for the one that ended up going to, can to Canada. Took everything out of this car, put it in the 74 shell, sadly said goodbye to the 74 shell as it got loaded on a truck and sent off to New York so it could get driven across the border into Canada. But I got to keep this car as partial payment for all the work I did, uh, putting basically a whole car together out of nothing. And so that's where it is. It's a car that really nobody wanted and it was gonna, who knows where it was gonna end up. Uh, judging by how it had been repaired along the way, it was definitely, uh, let's say it was more work than the people who owned it up to that point were able to do. So that's how I got to this car. And I got finally got after Oh man, like 15 years of looking, I finally got the 75 that I was after. So this car is going to be with me a long time. And uh, at least I hope so. <laughs> so it took a long time to get to this point. So that is the rabbit story. There's a whole bunch of rabbit trucks and Corrados and Golfs and Jettas and all that stuff in between. But... Right now, I've got a rabbit that started it all and my bikes and a rabbit that's sitting here in the garage waiting to be finished up. And I still ride bikes. So I'm still doing the same stuff that I loved to do as a kid. Just doing it as an adult. <laughs>
Uh, this series is going to be about the relationship that people have with the car and the stories and what it means to them. And that's what's important. It's not that it's a 911 or a Rabbit or a Lamborghini or a Trabant. It doesn't matter. What matters is there's a story behind the car. So that is my goal for this whole new series. In addition to the racing and the restoration and the things that we, the things that I like to do on this channel, I want to bring you guys those stories because the stories are important. The stories are really what draws people to cars, like a certain type of car, and brings people the enjoyment. Um, for example, one of the cars that I walked past at Radwood. Uh, I'm not going to tell you which one it is, but I am going to bring the story. But the mistake that I made was at, when I went to Radwood at Sonoma, I saw the car, but I walked past it. I didn't listen to the story. I just walked past it. And I want to bring you the stories about the cars that you probably would walk past. Because those are the best ones that you might never hear. So that's the goal for this whole series. The whole ser the series is going to be named Carvelas, which is kind of a take on novellas, which is a a novella is a short version of a long story, or a long version of a short story. <laughs> but it fits, and it really kind of summarizes the message of what I want to do. I want to bring a short version of a very long story and of, of what these cars or just cars in general mean to people and let them tell their story to you. It's not about my story, it's about their story, their relationship, their memories, and that's what I hope to bring to you with this new series. So I hope you guys will enjoy Carvelas as I'm able to bring them to you. Um, it's not going to be a weekly thing, but I will be regularly bringing you guys stories of people and uh, their cars. So it's shaping up to be a really busy week here. Uh, in the next week, I have a Pacific Raceways track day put on by SCCA. Uh, I'll be doing that uh, later this week. And then next weekend, I'm taking the Mark II back out to Spirit Peaks Raceway for another rallycross. So it's going to be a different course, a whole bunch of more challenges. Hopefully I don't break anything on either of the cars uh, this coming week. So with that, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, get out there and work on something. <laughs>